So hallelujah, everyone who's watching this broadcast, especially Global Revival Church members, let God's grace be upon you. So continuing on from Tuesday, Tuesday, what has God given us? We're going to go a little more deeper. And we'll talk about it. So when you clearly know what you have, when you know what it's used for and why it was given to you, then your life will be changed. Your life will be different. And when you know what it is and you use it, you'll see how much difference there is in your life. So when you try to use the thing that God has given to you, then every day in your life, there will be signs, wonders, and miracles that will appear in your life. So to, through today's words, let it be grace upon us, and I bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen. So we're going to review what we talked about on Tuesday. What has God given us? So the first thing, in Ephesians 1, 3, so he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. To who? To those who are in Christ. It's been given to us and it will manifest in our life. So what are these spiritual blessings? Spiritual blessings. You know, we were dead and we came back to life, right? He gave us life, resurrection and life. So if you believe that he has given us life, so everything that is dead, everything that is broken, everything that is sick or diseased, you have the power to make it, bring it back to life. So in those areas, how can we use it? How can we know it? And how can we apply it in our life when we learn that? Then we'll turn into a very amazing person. So the issues happening in us, you wouldn't live the negative way. The power to change everything from dead to life is in us. And that's in Christ to those who are born again. That is the promise that God has given them. So what else has God given to us? Not only did he give us not only did he give us life, but he also gave us his son, Jesus. Because he gave us his son, Jesus, you know, he gave us his son, and he died for us. And everything that he has given to us through his son, yeah, he said, wouldn't he give you everything else that you need? So you have to believe in that. He already gave us his son. Wouldn't he give you everything else? You know, Father God loved us, so he gave us his whole self. He gave us His Son who is exactly like the Father, and in reality, He gave us the Holy Spirit so that it can manifest. So when the Holy Spirit is poured out upon us, what did we gain? What did God give us? So what was dead in our life in order for it to come back to life? What was dead to come back to life? We need God's anointing, the Holy Spirit anointing. So even if you have a car, you need gas for it to move. And you have to have oil in, in the engine for the car to work. So when God created us, he gave us, a, he created us in body, soul, and spirit. In order for that to activate, His living spirit has to work in us, and in order for that living spirit to work in us, there has to be another level of anointing that is poured out upon us. So, in f if you read. 2 Corinthians 1, 21-22 said, Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and has anointed us is God, who has also sealed us and given us the Spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. So there's an anointing in us, so we have to use that anointing so that anointing can be multiplied. We have to use that anointing so we know how the anointing can work and how it's activated. So towards someone who's sick, when you touch them, when you lay hands on them, then the life that is in you through your hand will be transferred to that person. So through your hand, the life will flow into them. So it's very interesting what God has given to us. It's the transfer of life. You know, the spirit to spirit touches. So in those areas, when it's very interesting when we experience it. So the anointing that is in you, you have to think of it as something very valuable and precious. So the anointing, based on how you respond, that anointing can expand and multiply or you might lose it. Depending on how, what kind of 
relationship you have with God, you can be someone that can multiply your anointing or you might lose your anointing. Then more revelation, more power, more ability, more intimacy, you can live closer with God. So the third, so what is the third Holy Spirit that God poured onto us in Ephesians uh, 1, 13 to 14. So he saved us and with his blood he bought us. So we became his. And until it is the... Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. So the Holy Spirit is the guarantee. So based on whether you're complete or not, you know, the covenant isn't cancelled eternally, forever, until you use it, until you understand it. And when what he has given you becomes totally yours, he's not going to leave you. And he stays in you as a guarantee. What greater blessing is there? So when you have friends, if you don't have a good relationship, you don't see them anymore, right? You cut them off. You don't pay attention to them. You separate from your friends when you don't have, when you cut them off. So if God were to act like that to us, then there's no one that would be alive right now. So the Bible says, For all have sinned and fell short of God's glory. But God in the opposite way to us, He gave us His Son, Jesus Christ, and He gave us the anointing inside of us, and He restored everything inside of us. And to restore it back to the original purpose, that is what Son Jesus Christ did. And the Holy Spirit guarantees that for us. That's why He is in us. That's why the Holy Spirit is in us as a guarantee. The Holy Spirit was given to us. So when you use what has been given to you, then no matter what situation or environment you're in, you can uh, use it. So believe in this truth. You know, everyone wants to receive love, right? Many, many people want to receive love from others, but instead they just get wounded and hurt. But, you know, God speaks to us, only God is love. So how can we enjoy His love? So Romans 5 verse 5 says, By the Holy Spirit who was given to us, the love of God has been poured out in our hearts. But many people, it's not that you receive the love one time. It's not. It's not only poured out to you one time, but it, you don't believe that it's continuously pouring out in you. His love is continuously poured out in you. If you don't believe that, then you cannot use it. So only when you believe that, that love will flow out of you. So death, or heaven and earth, darkness, light, power, authority. Is there anyone that, was, that can separate from the love of God? No. You know, God loved us. That's why He gave us His Son. And His Son loved us, so He gave us Himself. And the Holy Spirit, in order to prove this love to you every day, He poured it out on your hearts. He poured out the love of God on your hearts. That's why it's very important to clean up your heart. Why are you wounded? Why are you hurt? So it's Satan's scheme to mess up this love in you so that you cannot receive or believe in this love. So keep your heart. So life. So life comes from your heart. So all love comes from there too. His power and everything comes from here. So your heart is very important. So the kingdom of God is where? It's in your heart. The world teaches what? It, te it doesn't teach your heart. It teaches about your mind. What are you going to have in your thoughts? You know, the world teaches you knowledge. But you cannot be, see, you cannot be satisfied with only knowledge. By God's wisdom, there has to be love that He pours out onto us so that we have purpose and goal and hope in our life. So that love, He already poured it out into our hearts. So not only that, so that you can live that kind of life, you know, God will cover you with the mantle. So we're going to start with that. Second Corinthians 5 verse 2. For in this we groan earnestly de desiring to be clothed with our habitation which is from heaven. And the second Corinthians five five. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who also has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So when you look here, 
You know, he says to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. So not just after you die, but even while you're alive, all the ways that you live your life in this world, in order to change it to the kingdom of God's way, so, so now he has prepared us for this very thing, who also has given us this spirit as a guarantee. He gave us the new mantle, new garment, and NIV, it says, be clothed with heavenly dwelling or habitation which is from heaven so all the life from heaven all the areas characters that lifestyle that is kind of rotten or about in the dead area when he covers you with his habitation with his dwelling of his of the heaven it'll turn into new life are you satisfied with your own character personality but it's not easy to throw it away, right, or change it. So how can you deal with it? So God's grace is here. He poured out the Holy Spirit to us, and that Holy Spirit, He even gives us a new mantle, new garment of this habitation from heaven. So He came in us and poured out His love. He got rid of all the fear, rejection, and lies. And when you believe in that, then your character, your garment, he will change it to heavenly habitation, heavenly dwelling, his character, God's character, heaven's atmosphere. He's going to cover us with that instead. So it's a new life from not dead anymore. So you have to want that and you have to keep asking him for it. You have to do that so that your character can change. So not just what's given to you on the outside. But in order for you to be able to enjoy this as well. In 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. So he gave us something great, amazing. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So when you look here, it's very interesting. So you cannot understand everything, but by His divine power, by His divine power, you know, He poured out some kind of power. What is it? It pertains to life and godliness. So what belongs to His character, He already gave to us. He already poured it out to us. So by faith, when we live according to his word, then our inner man, how will it change? We become a divine partaker of his divine nature. We're just going to start to change into the partakers of the divine nature. So when, because when we believe in Jesus Christ, we didn't know about this. That's why you never used this area that was given to you. That's why your character is not changing. Okay? So use this power, this divine power. So everything that's corrupt, that's perishing in this world, it's the power to overcome all of that. You're easily tempted, right? You easily crumble, and after that you regret, and then you you complain and you blame, but it doesn't go away, right? So, but it's because you don't know what. It's because inside of you, he put this life in you. He already gave it to you. You have to use what He has given you. So this divine power that God has given to you that pertain to life and godliness, so all corruption, all the things that are destroying, perishing, everything that makes leads to death, the power to change it into life. So the past trauma and pains is already inside of you. But through... So you know, Jesus Christ, you could change it into the resurrection. You know, He put that power inside of us already. So what He gave to us we, by faith, when we ask Him and seek Him, then His character, His love, His goodness, His mercy, we can experience it. 
how when we encounter him that we can know so what's in us when it manifests when you encounter then it'll manifest when you meet him then those things will manifest when you seek him it'll manifest you know, I told you, many people kept attacking Pastor Kim, mocking him, persecuting him, but God helped him to experience this. So the Holy Spirit started to come upon him, and then started to feel like something started to go down, and he felt peace, even though all these people were attacking him. And, you know, he was getting mocked all night, but he wasn't wavering, because the Holy Spirit gave him peace. So he's like, Oh, this is the power, the power of life that can overcome all these situations. So when you keep using that by faith, then you become a divine partaker of His divine nature. You become a partaker of His divine nature. Have you ever heard, when I look at you, I feel like I see Jesus? Have you ever heard that? You know, we're supposed to hear that. We're little Jesus. So Jesus is our big brother. That is the Father's picture. He, he wants us to be the same form and image as Son Jesus Christ. That is Father God's picture. That's why He gave us all this blessing, life, the way to overcome resurrection, life, so that everything on the outside and inside can work together. So He poured it out on the outside and inside, and He wants us to know how to activate and use all those things. So He gave us that hope. So say thank you. Rather than being interested in what you have given to me, but I kept using the things that you haven't given to me, so it was defiled and broken. You never gave me the spirit of fear. It's what Satan gave me and what I made up. But I focused on that. And he gave me, and you gave me the divine power to overcome all of that. You gave me the life and godliness. You gave me all the power to overcome all of that stuff. But inside of me, I never used it. I confess and repent. So Lord Jesus, everyone who's listening to this broadcast in their hearts, starting from the inside of you, deep inside of you, let the Holy Spirit, all of your inner man, all the dimensions, all the unreached areas inside of you, you rule and reign over. Have dominion and let our life become changed into your divine nature. And when we're changed to his, his divine nature, then the unproductive, ineffective parts will change to what? To effective and productive. You know, every day we try, but it didn't work, and we were always disappointed. So as soon as we change this thinking pattern, when this negative turns into positive through that transfer, what couldn't work before will work now. Even if you don't work that hard, when you know who you are, and you know that you're someone who can enjoy all these blessings and power, as soon as you proclaim and declare that, then it'll become effective, okay? So don't be deceived by Satan any longer. You don't know how great of a blessing it is. So there's something even more amazing. He gave us, you know, himself, Jesus himself. And he gave us his glory that's upon Jesus. So let's go to Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So God to the Gentiles, the mystery, He gave this mystery to the Gentiles. He gave it to those who don't believe. But Jesus Christ coming inside of you is the hope of glory. So what does that mean? Jesus, before the foundation of this earth, the glory that he shared with Father God through Son Jesus Christ, he put that same glory in us. Do you understand? He put that glory in us. So why do we need this glory? You know, with unveiled face, we see his glory. So we change from glory to glory, right? We change to the Son's character, right? And 2 Corinthians 4, 4, it says, Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So when this glory of Christ shines on this earth, then all that darkness will go away. That darkness cannot come near you anymore. When His glory manifests, that means the power of the Father God manifests in you. So when you look in the Bible, it says, My word abides in you. 
when, when you abide in me and I abide in you, then everything that you need to ask, then it'll be done and my Father will be glorified and you'll be glorified too. And at that time, His glory will start to shine upon us. Then in us, you know, he always, Pastor Kim always considered this. So with unveiled face, we have to see the glory. You know, we have to see the glory. But it's not easy, right? We have to be where the glory is. <clears throat> but what he gave us even more foundational thing, he gave us the glory in us already. No, don't look for the glory outside. But, you know, take out the glory that's inside of you. Show the glory that's inside of you. Shine the glory that's inside of you. Then all of this will work together. John 17, verse 22. So we have to see this picture. And the glory which you gave me I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one. So Jesus Christ clearly said, you know, the glory that you gave me since the foundation of this earth, I gave it to all believers. The reason why I gave the glory to them is that so that through that glory we can become one. Just like the Father God and the Son are one because they shared their glory, so that same glory He gave it to us, and He created us in His image, so that image of God is completed in us, so that same glory in us will start to manifest. Okay, so that same glory was in us, so full of glory. So being full of His glory, in order for it to manifest in our life, that's why He gave us this glory. So the so when someone looks at the glory that comes out of us, when they look at when they look at the glory coming out of you, it turns into glory to glory. Then multiplied, when you start to manifest the glory, then people see that glory and they start to manifest the glory. So it manifests, manifests, given, receive, given, receive. That that place, you know, is going to be filled with glory. So this picture, you know, Satan makes you fight with each other, so you cannot understand that. You don't think of each other as a precious, you know, being. You know, you guys are all glory carriers. That's why in Isaiah 61, you know, he poured out the anointing so that that can manifest. What you're bound to, through his anointing being poured out on you, he got rid of it, he cut it off, he made you loose, so that the glory inside of you could come out of you, so that you become a glory carrier, you manifest his glory. That's since the beginning, Adam, he's the one who represented Father God, and Adam was the one who, you know, manifests the Father God. Who does he manifest? You know, Father God himself, his glory. Through who? Through Son Jesus Christ. He gave it back to us, this glory. So you have to think of this thing as very precious, His glory. But many people don't know that you have this power inside of you. You're not interested. What are you more interested in? What you need right now in the world. Food, clothes, you're only focused on the physical level. That's why you cannot rule and reign over and have dominion with the power that's already in you. When you seek first His kingdom and righteousness, then that kingdom comes out of you, then the glory will be activated in you. You know, arise and shine, then the glory, the anointing will be poured onto you. So you arise and shine the glory inside of you. Then His glory will even come more and more. Then around you, everything around you will change. So when you do it together with someone else, it will be great power. It will be multiplied even more. So why does Satan keep trying to mess you up so that these things cannot work? And you cannot even know that these things are happening. Just go to church. That's what Satan should deceive you with. Just go to church. Just focus on what you have to eat, drink, clothes, and then when a greater glory, because when the greater glory comes, then the world's going to change. Satan doesn't want that. So you have to clearly know what God has given you. Let's go to Romans 8, verse 14 to 17. What does it say? For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit. So that we can cry out, Abba, Father. We can call him Father God. You're not begging. You're in so much joy and you're enjoying this glory. So you just call out, Abba, Father. So you just cry out. 
Then the Spirit says, Yes, you are the Son of God. He will prove it. He's our witness and the promised inheritance, just like He gave to Son Jesus Christ, He's going to share it to us as well. So when you use the name of Jesus, then the glory that Jesus has, everything that was given to Jesus, when you share and you proclaim by faith, then that same thing will come out of you. So by faith, when you practice, and one by one, it'll start to work. And that becomes your inheritance. That's what Father God has spoken. Father God said, Father God doesn't say, this is mine. Why are you taking what is mine? Jesus Christ doesn't say, this is mine. Why are you taking it? He doesn't say that. Everything that he has, he already gave everything to us. That's why he came. He came to give us everything. But because you don't have this picture, every day you're disappointed, you give hope, and you go towards a negative. You fall into the pit. You fall into the depths. You cannot see the light. You're always looking down. And Satan's clapping his hands. So change your thinking in you. He already gave it to you. It's not he's going to give it to you. It's already been given to you. It's been given to you. So you have to start to use what he has given to you. Then your life will change. Okay? So this is everything about the inside, inner being. So now we're going to talk about the outside. What has he given you? Uh, he gave you authority. He gave you authority and power. So Matthew chapter 10, Luke chapter 10. Mark 16, Matthew 16, it's all about I gave you the power or authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. So exosia. I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The Satan doesn't have power. Uh, the Satan doesn't have authority. He gave you the authority to have power over the enemy and they can by no means hurt, hurt you. So then you have to use this authority and power. When you meet someone who's sick, you have to use it. When you, you send something weird in the spiritual, you have to use it. Because you don't use this authority and power, you don't know what you have. So you have the driving license, but you don't drive and you just, le you just leave it in the closet. And you try to drive after so long. This driving license, you never used it credit card no matter how much you have it if you don't use it you don't know anything about it so what he has given to you you have to use it and when you use it and if it doesn't work out then you realize you have to come from did I use it wrong so how to use it when God is giving you something there's a guideline to how to use it and a time different situation God will teach you how to use it that's what he promised us that Holy Spirit is never going to leave you so I for, lo, I'll be with you to the end of the earth and in Matthew 28 18 to 20 it says all authority has been given to me in heaven and earth go therefore and make disciples of all nations all people, all nations, make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So when you use what God has given you, when you start to obey, you'll start to have inheritance. You'll start to get disciples. That's why you have inheritance. You use what God has given you so you experience the power. You know what authority is and what else is guaranteed. God is with you. That is guaranteed. No matter where you are, He is always with you. Say hallelujah. So to those who fear the Lord, He will command His angels to encamp you and protect you. You know, it says that. Okay. To those who fear the Lord, you'll be able to taste His goodness. Those who fear the Lord, the mysteries, his secret of the covenant, he's going to teach you even more deeper. And if you go to Matthew chapter 13, what else is there? Matthew 13 verse 11. Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them, those who don't believe, it has not been given. So some kind of secret or mystery, how to open the gates of the kingdom. You know, he allowed you to use the, those mysteries and secrets. Where do you want to live though? You would, you would want to live there, right? So in Korea, there's a Yonsei University and they have a library. So the bachelors cannot go in. 
bachelor's degree can go in. They just write which they just write which books they want, then they can grab it later. But when you become a graduate level student, then you can go in. So what's different when you go in? You can see all the books in there. You can read and take whatever you want, anything you need. But bachelors, you have to request. So to access the kingdom of God, he already gave it to you when you're born again. The access key. You can see the kingdom of God. You can enter the kingdom of God. That that's what he has given to you when you're born again. But if you don't use that authority, the mysteries of the kingdom of God, you know, the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been given to you so you can come in and use it. And then it says, John the Baptist, you know, until then, you know, now the kingdom of God works, but the, God, the kingdom of God is those who invade, who are, you know, so what he has given to you, boldly, you want to know more, when you keep seeking him, you have to take it, that is what is yours. Says, Among those born of women, there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist, because he didn't know about this. He couldn't seek and search and take what it is, what is his. You know, he introduced everything to people, but he couldn't take it. He couldn't use the mysteries. But the authority that he has given to us, the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been allowed to you. You know that it's been given to you. And to the church that he bought with the Son, Jesus Christ's blood, as soon as you just confess that you are the Son of the living God, the Messiah, Jesus Christ, then you become the dwelling place where his presence and glory dwells, and he gave you the king's keys of the kingdom of heaven, so he gave you the authority to bind and loose. Whatever you bind on earth, whatever you bind what you don't need, It'll be bound in heaven, and it can no longer intervene in your life or bother your life. And whatever you lose, there will no longer be any hindrance. So he gave you that great blessing and authority. Do you agree? So the authority to bind the loose, the authority to cast out demons, to have dominion over this world, to heal all the sick and diseases. So what God has given to you, you believe in it. So let's go further. In John 17 verse 4, what did Jesus say? I have finished the work which you have given me to do. I have glorified you. That's what Jesus said. So the task that the Lord gave us, what is it? To be like the Son Jesus. To keep seeking the mystery of the kingdom and using it. To use the authority and power that's been given to us. All the spiritual blessings that he gave us, you use it and save others. You shine all the glory to other people. You make more people like Jesus. So all of those things, you know, has been given to you. So when you do those things, then everything you need on this world, all your necessities, eating, drinking, all your clothes, everything that you need, will automatically be added to you it'll be provided to you but you live in the opposite way right you're not focused on the essence you're more focused on what God says you don't need to do it and you keep doing those things so how much would God feel so sad right you're you're not focused on the essence just what you you're not you're focused on something else of this world so when you go to the restaurant, are you going to eat the main course? Or are you just going to eat the appetizers and des dessert? You're going to eat the main course, right? You're, you came to eat the main course. The appetizer is to prepare you for the main course. That's what the appetizers are. But if you don't eat the main, and you go in, you just eat, you just drink the welcome drink, and and then you just eat the dessert and then you just drink tea and then you said oh I eat well is there anyone like that yeah that's crazy so believe in Jesus in the right way don't live like that anymore use what God has given you by faith one by one one by one keep trying and hold on to this word and ask God you know you promised me this activated in me 
Teach me how I can activate it. Then he will teach you. So Father loved the Son. You know, he will show the Son everything. Of, just like the Father loved the Son, the Son said, I love you as well. You know, just as the Father sent me, I send you. Then you can do the same thing as Jesus and even do greater things than Jesus. That promise was already given to you. It's already inside of you. Because we didn't use it, that's why we cannot go into that area. You know, I believed in a long time too. You know, we did a lot of similar things before, but this time, you know, God revealed to Pastor Kimbe more deeper, more revelation. So, in other words, He gave you everything. He gave you everything, but you don't believe in it. What your mind has been said to, you cannot believe it. Why? Because someone like me, to me, someone like me, you know, the Father God doesn't say anything, but you yourself, you're saying that to yourself. He already gave it to you in your hand, but you say, it's not me. You never gave it to me. You want me to give it to someone else. That's what you're doing. He already put it in your hand. So, Lord Jesus, what you gave to me, I never gave thanks or was moved or rejoiced or I never glorified it. I, you know, I always had regrets and I never used what you gave me. So I come back before you, Jesus, so that the brilliance, authority, glory, and power that you have given to me, let it manifest through me, in me, the Holy Spirit work in me, help me, and let me grow even further. So I bless you guys in Jesus' name. Amen.